The largest protest in human history is happening right now. Couldn't hear me? This is exactly how people who protest feel. Unheard. 2020 has been the year of big protests from Europe and Africa to the US. But right now the world needs to know about the protest in India because it represents those around the world who never get hurt. People who get ignored by those in power. Because of new farming laws, poor farmers can be exploited by rich corporations. Without the minimum price previously agreed by the government, farmers have very little bargaining power and corporations can force them into selling their crops at ridiculously low prices to keep up with the market. In other words, many farmers will lose money because farms cost more than the sale of their products. That left them with no choice but to march in protest in the middle of the pandemic. Night farm. In the world, there are many professions that make our lives much better. Farmers, builders, cleaners, supermarket workers. All of them matter so much in the society, but never get their voices heard. Never get to earn a good living, quite the opposite. Year by year, their lives get harder. Truth is, we live in times when many governments and people don't appreciate the work of low and middle class workers. That is why farmer suicide rate remain extremely high as a result of a big debt. And that is exactly why this protest needs to be heard all around the world. Because this is not just about India. This is about millions of people who work hard for long hours to feed our stomachs, clean our streets or build our homes. What they do is important for our survival, yet what they need for their survival isn't seen as priority by governments. How much longer can they accept their voices being unheard? This is no way of handling such an agitation. This revolution. All of this is not very easy to watch and hear. But still, it is very inspiring. It is inspiring how powerful common people can be in big numbers. To come together in the largest protest in history, to stand united against discrimination, this has to make a difference. Because when people stand united, minorities can come together to become majorities and shake up the world. That is how the protest of the unheard is quickly becoming heard all around the world. Canada will always stand up for the right of peaceful protest. People in London, Australia and New York are all coming together in solidarity with Indian farmers. This is how this protest reached me. May these farmers become the voice for all the workers around the world who are silenced by those richer than them. May they give strength to all of those who feel like their work is not appreciated. May they bring a better tomorrow to everyone who works their ass off without a good salary. Today, the whole world has to hear the voices of farmers from India. Because in the world with so much noise, the last thing we need is for those who make this world better to fight for their dignity unheard. To all people and extended family around the globe, you've probably seen posts over the past week about farmers' protest in India. Let's try to better understand these laws and situation. India is still a developing country, with 60-70% to 70 population who survive on farming and majority of the farmers are poor. In September amidst the pandemic, Indian government passed three laws deregulating the agriculture sector in India. They did this without consulting any farmers' organizations. Here's a brief rundown in simple language of what these laws mean for farmers. Law number one eliminates all government subsidies for farmers and the minimum support price, or MSP, which the government guaranteed to farmers for at least a few grain crops rice, wheat, corn, etc., which ranged from 10 to 15 U.S. dollars for 100 kilos, 220 pounds of grain produced, so $150 for a ton. This law also eliminates within a year or two the government-run infrastructure or procurement houses where a farmer could take his harvest and sell it to the government at the MSP. Mind you, no farmer ever got the MSP, thanks to rampant corruption and middlemen. 
So in its place, the government is letting private corporations and large companies take its place, where the farmers will have to do contract farming with the corporate and private sector. Whatever the company wants, the farmer grows as per contract and set upon price. You get the picture. Extreme exploitation of an already poor farmer. More farmers losing whatever they have. Law number two. If a farmer gets into a dispute with a private company, he cannot go to the courts. No legal recourse for 50 to 60% of India's population in case a big corporation exploits them. As a citizen of India, you can't go to your own Indian courts. Instead, some local government official will resolve and arbitrate the disputes. And who do you think the corrupt government official is going to be in favor of? Law number three. Any person or entity can hoard or store an unlimited quantity of any essential commodity or food product. 90 to 95% of farmers have no means to build their own cold storage, but large corporations do. You see a problem with that? So those are the laws. Basically, India is throwing the largest and poorest segment of its populace to the wolves. Why did the Indian government pass the farm bills during a global pandemic that is threatening agricultural workers. Our people are strong and their voice is being heard all over the world. This is the largest human protest in history. The peaceful protest is labeled as anti-national, calling the farmers terrorists. The Indian media is playing a manipulative part. But not this time. We have platforms now to raise awareness of the truth. Army is attacking the mostly elderly farmers. At least four died who just want their voice heard. What the government doesn't understand is that these elders are willing to die on the makeshift camp, then let the future of their children be lost in poverty and usurpation. In Bihar, farmers are at the mercy of corporations. They migrate to Punjab, looking for work because deregulation has completely taken away their livelihood. This is why Punjab and Haryana farmers are at the forefront right now. But no mistake, this is a pan-India farmer issue. This is a farmer-led movement. So naturally, farmers all across India had been protesting in their own states since September, but no one cared. So finally, last week, Indian farmers from Punjab decided to take their protest to New Delhi, the Indian capital. Some walking and traveling on their tractors and carriages hundreds of miles to Delhi. But instead of having a safe journey to their own nation's capital, they were met with numerous police barricades, water cannons, tear gas canisters by the government in order to thwart their march to the capital. But despite all the obstacles and some deaths along the way, they got to Delhi's outskirts, only to find a heavy police and military presence in Delhi. And that is where the situation is gridlocked currently. The Minister of Agriculture has said they're open to talks, but the farmers want all three bills repealed before they'll even consider talks. The Prime Minister is a little dictatorial, and there exists a real possibility that he can order the police or the military to open fire at the protesting farmers. Farmer protests so far have been extremely peaceful and united. Farmers are camped out for miles on end on the roads approaching Delhi, and have brought enough food with them on their trolleys to last them many months. The mainstream Indian media is shining nothing but a negative light on the farmers' protests. Let's pledge to stand with our farmers.